Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Nakia and today's video is going to be a Q&A type of video. I'm going to be answering your questions and addressing some of the comments in the comment section of my videos. So if you want me to answer your question, I'll, I, I do try to respond to as many as possible on the video, but if you want me to answer your question in a future video, please go ahead and leave a comment down below. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first question or comment, well, question, do you think about transitioning to an analytics manager, director level role at this point? How do you plan to level up, to prepare, nervous on reaching the end of my runway and not prepped for takeoff? Okay, so this is a really good question and let me just address it head on. So for me personally, I have no desire to go into a role where you're where I'm leading people. So a manager, director, I don't have a desire to manage people. I've been in a role where I was a manager and I had direct reports before. It was in like a temporary role, but I did not I did not like it. There's a lot that you have to do as a manager and you're not more so digging into the data and the results. You're spending a lot of your time managing the people that roll up to you. And I know that a lot of companies like to, like that's, that seems to be the only roadmap is that in order to excel or, you know, to get promoted in your career, like the career path is going into management. And I, I don't have a desire to go into a management role where I am a people leader. I know that's not for me. I am an individual contributor. I more so want to be the one digging into the data, analyzing the results, providing the insights. Like that's where I am the happiest. That's where I find the, the most joy, regardless of issues or things that may come up. Like that's where I wanna be. That's what I wanna do. And I know that those types of roles are limited. Like within my company, there are some manager level roles where you don't have direct reports. So that would possibly be the next, like another option or the next step for me. But I can also go into being a data scientist if I wanted to level up and continue in the analytics path, but, you know, progress my career another step. So that would probably be either going either the manager in analytics like a bi manager or data analytics manager that does not have direct reports that would probably be an option for me but i think i would more so lean towards going the data scientist route if that makes sense and in order to make sure that i have the skills and things needed to exceed or, you know, so that I can exceed in that role, I would definitely make sure that I'm taking courses for data science, uh, possibly enroll in a class or do something like that. But that's just personal to me. Like, I, I, I don't see myself being a man. And then that's at this moment in time, I don't have a desire that can change. But as of right now, I don't have a desire to go into a management role where I'm a people leader. Um, but I think if you are, you need to get into, um, like one, if you're able to get like a mentor that's in a leadership role, because there's a lot that you have to do in management, not just making sure that your employees are doing their work, but you're at the end of the day responsible for that. You have to be a good leader for them. Um, someone they can call on any time of day, you know, so I think any kind of leadership courses or things that you're, if you're working with a company that they may offer internally, I know my company does, so that may be helpful for you to help go in that role, well, to, you know, get in a position where you're a people leader. Um, but again, not for me. And I, I think that, I mean, as far as analytics go, I don't know about reaching the end of the road because like I said, you can, there are different aspects of data analytics that you can learn, not just in like a specific domain, but um, like going the data scientist route, going into BI, you know, that route. So I don't know what you do, but just some other options to progress. And I don't know if you would want to go the route of, you know, you're done with analytics. Let me go into software engineering. I hear a lot of people, you know, make that leap or they see this as a stepping stone to go that route. So maybe look into that if that's something you're into. The next question asks, who is responsible for providing solutions or is that handled by who you typically would be presenting the data to? 
Okay, so, so as a data analyst, it is our role and responsibility to gather data, provide insights, to answer questions, like to solve business problems. So that's our role. However, we may not always have the data or insights to provide solutions. Sometimes we do, but not that's not always the case. We do like internally where I work, we do have a strategy team and other teams that may come up with the actual plan and solution as to how to solve the business problem. We may be just the ones identifying, like answering, hey, this seems to be a problem. This is what we see as the issue. Okay, now someone else may need to go and actually come up with the solution to solve that problem. So let's say that I work for Target and someone from the customer experience team came to me and said, hey, we're getting a lot of feedback from customers stating that their orders aren't ready in the two hour time frame that we advised it would be ready by. Need you to dig into it, find out what's going on. So let's say I do some analytics and I find out that the from the time the order is placed to the time that it's pinged in the internal systems at the store location, it, there is a delay. There's some kind of system delay possibly that's causing it not to notify employees at the store location in a timely manner. And that's why the order is being processed for store pickup is delayed. So let's say I do the analytics. I provide the presentation saying, hey, this is the problem. This was what causing it. You know, we need to dig in, fix whatever it's causing it. I can provide a solution of what I believe we need to do take the steps to make sure that employees are notified in a timely manner so that customers can get their orders processed within that two hour window okay great but sometimes we may be asked hey why is this employee's performance dropping it may not be obvious and it may not be something that just analyzing data i can determine from my end that may be something that the that person's direct um, leader needs to dig into and finding out because they have that personal connection with that employee to find out, okay, maybe there was a death in the family. Maybe there's something else going on, kids, family. Like that's not something I can use data to solve for. I can see, yes, their performance is dropping. I can probably provide insights as to when we started to see a change in performance. However, having a solution as to what, like knowing the underlying root cause of what's causing their performance to drop, I may not always have insight into. So that's something that I can't necessarily provide a solution for because I don't have some additional insight to go along with it, if that makes sense. So good question. I hope I was able to answer it. Okay, so next question is, What are metrics? So I know I say, I think I say metrics a lot. Metrics, KPIs, all these different terms. So let me just explain. Metrics are what we use to measure performance. That kind of like KPIs kind of measure performance. We use metrics to measure performance as well. So metrics and KPIs are a little bit different, but just to address the metric piece, let's say for example that you work at Amazon and Amazon wants you, like let's say that you work at Amazon as a driver, as a delivery person. And let's say that they have a metric where you're supposed to complete so many deliveries per hour. That is a metric. Let's say that they're saying you need to do 10 deliveries per hour. That would be the metric that they're holding your performance to. So let's say the goal is that you do the 10 per hour. Let's say you come in at six per hour. That's the metric that we're measuring performance. Okay, how many deliveries per hour are you doing? So there's different kind of measure, like we all have metrics and things that we're held responsible for as employees to our performance. That's just what we call them, metrics. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so this next question is, what do I need to know? Hold on. What do I need to know to enter the job market as a data analyst? I'm currently enrolled in a boot camp. Okay, so I don't, okay, so just for my background, just so you guys know if you're not aware or you're new here, I got into data analytics with no background in data analytics. So 
I had no experience. I didn't know SQL, Tableau, Click, none of that. That's how I was hired. So I don't want to come on here and be like, oh yeah, you need to do all of these things in order to get into a role because I know that you know, you can get into a data analytics role without experience. However, that may be the exception and not the rules, but I don't want to come on here and lie to you guys. I'm like, you don't need any of that. You can get the job without doing anything when I know that may not always be the case for everyone. So I would say just general basics. One, know how to use Excel, not just your basic Excel where you're looking at spreadsheets and know some formulas and functions and things of Excel, okay? Know how to do pivot tables. Learn how to do more than a sum, okay? Learn VLOOKUPs. Know how to use Excel for a pretty good amount because I think there's this kind of misconception where people think we don't use Excel. I use Excel like every day, okay? Either that or Google Sheets. I'm using it every day. Y'all think these stakeholders and these VPs and directors are going in these Tableau dashboards and manipulating? They're not. They're not using it, okay? They are old school and still want their Excel dashboard or Excel reports, okay? That's what they're used to. That's what they're going to use, all right? So, Excel. And then I would say, no Excel, pretty good. Learn a data visualization tool. Um, which one you learn? Up to you. Power BI is an option. Um, Tableau, Click. There's a lot of different options. So, pick one, learn one. And then I would say also a programming language. Um, SQL, Python are the two popular ones. No one, I would say, pick one, learn it. I think that's probably just the basics, like in skills that you wanna have to get into. And also, oh, domain knowledge. Please don't overlook domain knowledge because I think that's helpful as well where you, domain knowledge, having experience or knowledge about a particular area or field. So for example, you could be a data analyst in healthcare. Healthcare is your domain knowledge. If you know that background, that is going to help push you above someone like me. I don't have any experience in healthcare, okay? I know how to do data analytics, but I know nothing about healthcare. So when it comes to applying for a job in the healthcare field, I would think that I would not be a likely candidate without knowing the healthcare systems and tools and billing and how everything works. Like, I don't know anything about it, okay? So domain knowledge, definitely think that's important. That I would say that's the basics. Um, oh, and then a comment. Okay, it's funny that this is the next comment. I'm currently taking a data analytics class. The class is heavily in Excel. I am on overload with it, so I feel like I have never really utilized it the way it was intended. And I think that's the case for a lot of people. I feel like a lot of people don't use Excel or don't see how great Excel is. That's why I say I think you need to know Excel really well because when you go and you look at, or when you start learning a programming language like SQL, you will start to like, things will start to click and you'll be like, oh, it mirrors this in Excel. Like this matches this in Excel. Like the layout of the databases are in columns and rows, just like you see in Excel. So I think if you have a good basis and understanding of how Excel works, it becomes a little bit more easier to learn SQL and see how these things work. And you'll see how a lot of these things, oh, okay. Things start to clicking, light bulbs go off, you know? And even I, that I've been using Excel for years, and I do a lot of like formulas and calculations and things like, and functions and stuff like that in Excel, even I don't use it for everything that it's capable of doing, so yeah. I agree with that comment. Okay, but. you guys, so I'm editing this Q&A and there was a question in on my community tab that I wanted to answer but forgot to in when I was recording, so I'll answer it here. They asked about the job market in, for a data analyst in Atlanta, what it's like. I can't really answer that because I haven't been like searching for a job, so not really sure what it's like for other data analysts. And then they mentioned that they're interested in relocating. I would advise that if you're, I don't know where you're at, I don't know where you're currently located, but I would just say that if you're wanting to relocate for a job, my advice, you definitely don't have to take it, but I would just say that with a lot of companies returning to the office, look for a job, I would recommend looking for a job where there is a office location 
because those are preferred candidates if you are able to come into an office, if that makes sense, if you catch my drift. That is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And again, if you have any questions you want me to answer, leave them in the comment section. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.